The health secretary has announced the government has reached its goal of 100,000 tests per day for coronavirus, a target that it set itself for the end of April. Matt Hancock said that yesterday 122,347 tests were provided. That includes nearly 40,000 test kits posted out, which may not yet have been used or returned to laboratories. Some frontline medical staff have said they are still struggling to get access to tests, and critics have called the government target a distraction. 739 deaths in the UK have been reported in the past 24 hours. That's those who've tested positive for coronavirus and died in hospitals, care homes and the community. The total number of UK deaths stands at 27,510. Mr Hancock said the government would now move to increase contact tracing. That's tracking everyone who comes into contact with a person who tests positive so that they can self-isolate. Our health editor Hugh Pym reports. A very quiet Stansted airport, especially for a Friday, but there was activity, virus testing in a car park, one of the drive-through centres set up in the last month to greatly increase capacity, with an overall target of 100,000 tests per day by this week, and the health secretary said that was comfortably achieved. This unprecedented expansion in British testing capability is an incredible achievement, but it is not my achievement. It is a national achievement. How do you intend to further develop and expand the testing network as part of moves to combat the virus? By testing, you can help to treat patients better. We've always been testing patients. You can help get people back to work, and there's been a big expansion of the, of the eligibility to get a test in order to be able to get back to work. The Scottish Government says testing capacity, which is included in the overall total announced today, is set to rise from just over 8,000 to 12,000 per day in a few weeks' time. This mobile unit in Elgin, staffed by military personnel, opened today. The daily UK total includes home testing kits sent to people who booked them online but not actually completed. Government sources argue it's the only way they can be counted as it's harder to track them when swabs are sent back to the labs. It's quite stressful we'll get, we'll get through it. There's confusion about some aspects of the new system. The owner of this care home in Cumbria said he was sent a letter telling him only to book home testing kits if residents and staff had symptoms, whereas days before the government had said tests could be booked online regardless of whether they were unwell. It's terrible, really, how, it's, how these people are they're being treated as throwaway, I think. They're just, they're no longer productive, so they're not that important. And it's an awful shame. One nurse told us there was no NHS priority system and she was stuck in a long queue at the drive-in centre. After two hours sitting waiting, um, the police came and went car to car um, and informed us that the test centre had run out of tests and we should um, go home and try again tomorrow. I think for me the frustrating thing was that I'd accessed the test as a priority, prioritised key worker. Testing is one thing, but slowing any future spread of the virus will depend on tracing recent contacts of anyone who's tested positive. Public health officials will phone or email people who the patients met recently. The government says it's recruiting 18,000 staff to do this. An app will also be used alerting people that someone they've been with has tested positive. They're then told to self-isolate and report any symptoms. The testing figure in itself is not a strategy. What we need is a proper contact tracing strategy. That's, that's what we've been calling for. That is going to be crucial in breaking the chains of transmission. There was a novel vote of thanks to the NHS today. In major cities, including Edinburgh, they painted the post boxes blue close to hospitals in honour of the work done by frontline staff. Hugh Pym, BBC News. People living in more deprived areas of England and Wales are more than twice as likely to die if they become infected with coronavirus than those living in more affluent areas, according to new figures. The government said it was worried by the findings and was looking into them. Our social affairs correspondent Michael Buchanan reports. East London this evening and clear signs that some people are struggling with a lockdown. The area has the highest level of COVID-19 related deaths in England and is also home to some of the poorest people in the country. It's always the situation, isn't it? Poor is going to always suffer and, and, and rich is going to be always safer. Money. A large population living closely together, including having among the highest levels of overcrowded homes 
makes social distancing harder. There's like a lot of people crowd overcrowded, like let's say in these, you know, marketplaces and everything. You know, everyone's like, you know, quite close to each other and stuff. Today's figures starkly highlight how coronavirus has not affected everyone equally. Mortality rates in poorer areas are higher anyway, and this graph demonstrates that it shows all deaths in England in the six weeks since the 1st of March. And you'll see on the right-hand side, the most deprived communities have the highest levels of deaths. When you add in the COVID-19 related deaths, however, you will see the dramatic difference, the huge extent to which people in the poorer communities are dying because of the virus. Ministers say they would examine why death rates are higher, but anti-poverty campaigners say a range of factors are likely to matter. People on low incomes are more likely to be in jobs where they have to go out and work and where they are have, they have to put themselves at risk and then come back to overcrowded homes. So you end up with whole families being put at risk because people are in those jobs that you can't do from home. In prosperous Richmond in southwest London, death rates from COVID-19 are three times lower than in the poorest parts of the country. More space, fewer underlying health problems, helping to protect locals. Being yeah. in central London, my friends have said going to the supermarket is a very different experience and they queue for much longer and they're um, around people for longer periods of time. Mm. Like, I think it's very efficient here. Data from Wales has shown a similar link between deaths and deprivation. Health inequalities were rising in Britain before the pandemic, with life expectancy actually falling in some poorer towns. We didn't all go into this crisis equally, and it doesn't look as they will emerge from it equally either. Michael Buchanan, BBC News.